Greetings, everyone. Gleekon here again with another episode of Lore of Warcraft. Um, we did it. We got through another book. This is the fourth novel on this show that we've gotten through. Um, this is it. We've got just this, this epilogue and we're all done. Um, so I was just peeking ahead to see where we're going to go. It looks like in the Chronicles, year zero, the year of the Dark Portal, which is when Orcs and Humans starts. It's got eight or nine sections. Now, the actual first war spans the course of two or three games. I mean, I'm sorry, two or three years. So <clears throat> maybe about two years, like the year zero, year one, year two. So I think we'll read some. If not, I don't know that I want to read all of the whole nine sections. Um, but we will read at least a few of them. Um, and then before we jump into the game, then I want to go back and read The Last Guardian. And we're going to read, my guess would be, we're going to read most of that book before we get to Orcs and Humans, and we might read all of it. Um, what I'm thinking about doing is once we get to a point, and unless there is a clear defining point, because we know what the starting point in Orcs and Humans is the Orcs going through the portal and starting in the Black Morass, um, which I believe is eventually the Swamp of Sorrow. So we, as soon as we get that signal, um, there's a clear part that happens um, uh, in a few sections in Chronicles where they talk about entering the Black Morass. I think that's a decent stopping point there, or pausing point. And then, so if, if that happens in the book where we can say, okay, they clearly hit the Black Morass, um, then I would move forward and, and uh, we'll do... So at that point in time, we'll sort of be bouncing back and forth. But if that doesn't distinctively happen, or if it happens with The Last Guardian, like when there's a couple chapters of the book left or something, um, I, we might just plow through. But all right, stay, stay a little while and listen to this epilogue of The Rise of the Horde. And so began our people's history in this world of Azeroth. We thundered out of the portal like death incarnate, a torrent of blood-mad killers intent on slaughter. It is little wonder the humans hate us so, many of them even now, but perhaps this history I have chronicled will one day be read by human... Ooh, excuse me. Elven, gnomish, and dwarven eyes. Perhaps they will understand a little better that we too knew suffering and victimization. My father's suspicion that he and his clan were marked for exile proved correct. It was shortly after the Frostwolf clan entered Azeroth that Gul'dan banished them. They were forced to make their homes in the harshness of the mountains of Alterac. The White Wolves who still hunt in this place are descended from the Frostwolves, who followed my clan through the portal, and whose loyalty could not be swayed by the words of one who bore a grudge. When I was born, my father realized he had to tell the other orcs all he knew about what had been done to them. He approached his old friend, Orgrim Doomhammer, who believed him and would have allied with him had not my father been treacherously slain. When I reached adulthood, I became Orgrim's friend, as had my father before, and it is I who have fulfilled the prophecy of the Doomhammer. In their honor, this land is named Duratar, its greatest city, Orgrimmar. It is my hope that... My chieftain! The deep, rough voice belonged to Eitrig. Thrall stopped in mid-sentence, moving the pen so it did not drip on the parchment. What is it? He asked the elderly orc, who was one of his most trusted advisors. There is news, news from the Alliance. One of our information gatherers has, le has learned something. He insists you must know. Thrall disliked the term spy, but he had spies nonetheless, as he was certain Jaina Proudmoore had her spies in his lands. It was to be expected and was often worthwhile. Seldom had one of his gatherers insisted on seeing him like this. Something important must be happening indeed. So there must be a time period where Jane of Proudmoor is the leader of the Alliance. I don't know when that is. Maybe it's sh shortly. Yeah, maybe it's this is like this is two thousand seven. So I, I I don't I don't know. Show him in. And leave us, he said. Eitrick nodded, and a moment later a small, scrawny, nondescript human male was brought in. 
He looked exhausted, undernourished, and terrified. Grawl rose to his full imposing height without thinking, then realized he might intimidate the human. Will you take food or drink? he asked, keeping his voice gentle. The spy shook his head, then amended. Water, if you please, in a voice that cracked. The war chief himself poured a goblet and handed it to the man, who gulped thirstily and wiped his mouth with the back of his hand. I thanks, war chief, the spy said, sounding a bit calmer. Your news, Grawl said. The man paled. Grawl sighed inwardly. He would never be so brutal or so foolish as to kill a messenger for bringing bad news. Such behavior merely resulted in no one's wanting to serve his messenger. He smiled in what he hoped was a reassuring fashion. Do not fear. Your news, good or ill, is welcome, if it aids me in protecting my people, he said. The man looked slightly less distressed. He took a deep breath. My lord, he said, hesitated, then continued grimly. The Dranai have come to Azeroth. Thrall was puzzled. He exchanged glances with Eitrig, who shrugged. Some Dranai have been in... Some Dranai have been in Azeroth for years, he said. They are nicknamed the Lost Ones. We know about them. This is not news, friend. The man looked stricken. You don't understand, he said urgently. Not those pathetic creatures. Dranai! There, there was a ship from the skies. It crashed like an infernal stone two nights ago. Thrall inhaled swiftly. No one had missed seeing that strange object in the night sky looking like a star crashing to earth. So it had not been a star, nor even an infernal, it had been a vessel. The man was talking. Palmore has agreed to aid them. There is one among them, pale, noble, his presence commanding, though he is not physically strong. They call him Velen. Thrall stared the Dranai, the prophet Velen, here. He sank slowly in his chair and the full significance struck him. The worst enemy the orcs had ever known had come to Azeroth, had been welcomed into the Alliance. How could there possibly be peace between Horde and Alliance now? Ancestors, save us, Thrall whispered. Okay, so this is the beginning. This book was obviously written here right in the beginning of the Burning Legion, uh, the Burning Crusade. Because So that means in Classic, in our first expansion, it sounds like by the end of it, Jaina Proudmore is the leader of the Alliance and Thrall is the leader of the Horde. Neither one of those things are true anymore um, at some point. And that's the problem, as you know, the leaders of the Horde get replaced. Even So even if you did like a chromey timeline or whatever, other than cutscenes, the leader of the Horde at, the, that, if, at any, any particular time is... And the alliance is uh, it's tough to tell. So, for instance, right now, I don't even know, like in Shadowlands, because, uh, like, I guess Anduin was the leader at this point in time, but he's captured for so long. Who's serving in his place? Is it again Greymane? Is it Jaina Proud? Like, who is no because she's gone too they're all there um i think getting gray main maybe he's an option um same thing with the horde like it's definitely not thrall he's been out for a while um like and i know when i think back on pandaria expansion there's quest lines where anduin's like a younger man and his, there's cutscenes with his dad so his dad is the leader for a while. Um, at various points for the Horde, I know that, well, for the past couple, ex one or two expansions, like throughout BFA and maybe throughout Legion, um, Sylvanas, Sylvanas is uh, the war chief. I don't know who's considered war chief right now. Honestly, even in Shadowlands, which I've been playing for two straight years, I, I couldn't even tell you who, who the real leader is. Um, because they turned back from... They turned back from uh, Sylvanas, so it's not her anymore. Um, a lot of them just keep getting killed. Like, you have Vol'jin, 
he gets killed. Bane Bloodhoof is incapacitated right now. Um, yeah. So, I guess all the races, like, at one point or another, take their turn. Um, I don't think it happens as much that way with the Alliance, but with the Horde, yeah, you've had, you've had Torrent, you've had Orc, you've had, um, Troll, you've had Forsaken with Sylvanas, um, you haven't really had the other ones, but, yeah, anyway, I'm rambling, um, I thank you so much for listening, uh, this episode is in the pipes 5x5, five five. we'll do a little bit here, a couple, couple chronicles, like I said, then we'll start that last book before our Let's Plays. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one.